Welcome back. This is your Feel Good Breakfast Show Expresso on S3. And Genevieve Lentz is a lecturer, an educator, a public relations officer, and a table tennis expert. Now, her expertise in the sport has landed her the role at a deputy referee at the table tennis at this year's wow. 2020 Tokyo Olympics kicking <laughs> off this month. Can we give her a round of applause? <laughs> Absolutely amazing because Genevieve, who was also born and bred in Bontehevel in the mother city, she is the first African female to hold this title on the global showpiece. And she plans, she's joining us today ahead of leaving for the Olympics tomorrow to talk about her incredible career in the sport of table tennis. Unbelievable. That's amazing. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Has it sunken into you yet that you are heading through to Tokyo to join the Olympics? I think it's it's starting to, and the excitement is really starting to build up. I'm seeing, seeing everyone leaving, so my turn is tomorrow, and once I'm on the airport, I think then it's really going to hit in. So the excitement is definitely building up, so yeah. That I, is exciting. Was this on the cards? How do you arrive at this point in your life? When did the refereeing start to, to kind of take focus in your life? And this is obviously a massive leap forward. Where did it all start? It all started in um, Bonteville. Uh, so as a youngster, I started playing um, at primary school. I was introduced to table tennis at primary school. Funny thing is, it's uh, just before interval and the announcements are being made. And the announcement is that the table tennis is being offered. So, you know, they're asking students to come. So I've heard of tennis and I've often watched Wimbledon. So I'm like, what is table tennis all about? So um, I go up to where the, the, the classroom is and lo and behold, it's my class teacher who's actually <laughs> the coach. And I'm like, oh my word, this is a strict teacher. I don't think I want to play. <laughs> <laughs> but I actually got to see a really different side of my teacher and I, I got to enjoy it. Um, Mrs. Grunewald and Mr. Van der Speck. And um, yeah, and then um, I went on to high school. I um, played at um, played league at the high school and my mom bought my younger sister uh, like a plastic set while we were in primary school. And that was our weekend entertainment. I'm not sure if you are familiar with the um, wooden kitchen table. Yes. So we would <laughs> knock away. So that wooden kitchen table literally takes up half space of your kitchen, but we would knock away during the night it and weekends. It was ideal for it, yeah. It was yeah, so it. that's we, we played. So all three of my siblings, uh, all, well, my sisters at least, um, we all play. Um, that was high school and then I went to university and my sister said to me, you know what, there's a club in the area. She saw it in the newspaper. And I came from university and I'm like, no, I don't feel like going, I'm really tired. She's like, no, please, can we go? <laughs> so she drags me down. Can we thank down. her? Can we please thank her? <laughs> So she drags me down to the club and I enjoy what I see because here they're playing competitive, no, uh, you know, and the ball, yeah. the ball is going super fast and I'm like, this is what I want to do. Uh, and so then the chairman invites us to the tournament that Saturday. And lo and behold, when you go there the Saturday, I get thrown into umpiring. I don't, I'm not even sure that I know the rules because I've only been <laughs> exposed to school table tennis. I only know kitchen rules, man. I only <laughs> yeah, know kitchen rules. Yeah, you know, and then, oh yeah, and, and, and that's how it all kind of started. My sister went on to play for Western Province in South Africa. I wasn't that good a player, I played league, but I definitely found my neck in umpiring. Um, and then further than that, I qualified as a first league and then provincial and national umpire. And then every two years, the international umpires exams gets written across the world oh, wow. and at the same time. So in 2006, I got the opportunity to do my international umpires exam and I qualified. And since then, I've been traveling the world since 2006. Um, and in 20, I've been to 2008, I've been to um, the Paralympics, the Beijing Paralympics. 2010, I went to the first Youth Olympics in Singapore. And then in 2012, I went to the London Olympics. And I thought that was going to be the... the <laughs> I know! <laughs> I definitely did. Table tennis, for a kid coming from Bonteville, um, you know, it's expensive to travel and all of those sort of things. It kind of just they opened up the world for me. I got to see the world, you know, different world championships. Um, and yeah, and then one step from umpiring is, is Blue Badge. So Blue Badge, uh, Blue Badge umpire is seen as the elite umpires in the world and only they can, they are eligible to umpire at Olympics. So oh, wow. that's what I then qualified as the first female in South Africa, Blue Badge umpire. Um, and then from there, 2016, I got the opportunity to do my national referees course in Sudan. And in 2017, I qualified as the first African female 
to um, qualify as a, wow. a table tennis referee in Egypt. So, that's yeah, incredible. That's kind of the journey since yeah. uh, starting. What but it's, it, it, took, it took years. It's 22 years of journeying. It's not just happened overnight. Yeah, so it's I'm a lot so of, glad it's manifesting yeah. now at the yeah, biggest exactly. sporting showpiece Absolutely. in the world. Absolutely. It I really is amazing. I always get so fascinated when I watch table tennis events. And what would you say has been like the highlight for you? I think the highlight for me um, was going to the London Olympics and not expecting to umpire the female semi-final match. Um, I remember spe like specifically coming down the morning. Uh, we weren't told the night before who was going to do the match. Oh. And they said everyone needs to come the morning. And I got ready because I thought I'm going to do the morning match because that's not the important matches. The semi-finals <laughs> takes place in the afternoon. And lo and behold, my name is up and I'm the umpire, the main umpire. So that was like the highlight for me. Um, and then uh, also, unfortunately for, for the player, I had yellow card at the play and she was number one in the world. So the, ah! everyone's eyes was on me. Respect, <laughs> Respect ignites my authority. <laughs> Boom. Um, I love that. What do you prepare for? Like, do, do you turn from the neck or are your eyes really fast? Because how do you follow? The pace is so Absolutely. intense at the highest Absolutely. level. Absolutely. So initially, yes, then you go, you know, you're just doing that. <laughs> but kind of you get the, the, the position you, you pose eventually and you kind of just your eyes is moving not the head is moving you must have like record that, breaking so. hand eye you do, yeah. coordination. <laughs> <laughs> oh that is fantastic um you've clearly worked unbelievably hard to get to this point so congratulations thank you so much travel thank safe but soak you. up every second of being there i think we'll after everything we've been through over the last year and a half absolutely just getting to these olympics alone feels like a humanitarian feat so enjoy <laughs> being there and and thank you for, for flying that flag so proudly. Even your earrings <laughs> make us proud this morning. Proud but, um, so thank yeah, you so it's much. It's been an absolute pleasure meeting you. you. And, and travel safe and all the we'll best do. of luck. Thanks so much, Graham and Zoe. <laughs>